This is going to be the start of my three-part Selkie dress series. I'm going to be analyzing the dress like I did with the Lyric and Matoshi strawberry dress and I'm going to be taking a pattern and then I'm going to be recreating the dress. So this is going to be the first part of the series where I analyze the dress. So over the holiday season I took advantage of a lot of the holiday sales and I was able to get two Selkie dresses to review and analyze. Uh, I purchased these myself. This is not like a gift from them or anything. I just thought that it would be a lot of fun since I had so much fun analyzing the Lyrica Matoshi strawberry dress last year. I thought it would be interesting since Selkie has been getting very popular over the past like year or so. The two dresses I have are in their Ritz style. One is cotton and one is polyester organza. I don't typically like to buy or own polyester items because it's really bad environmentally, but this dress is like my moment of hypocrisy, so please forgive me. Selkie is, however, making more and more of their dresses out of silk and polyester organza, plus they have a lot of cotton dresses, so hopefully those are more available in the future and like in their cool fun prints. The Venus dress I really wanted because it's got a beautiful classical art print on it, but it's only available in the polyester so you know so though selkie is not 100 great environmentally because of their use of polyester and like just the nature of being a fashion company in general they do try really hard to be an ethical company they do claim that they manufacture all of their garments ethically in partnership with a factory in Jianying, china there's a lot of information on their website about this. I'm not gonna get into that in this video, so if you'd like to know more and more, please check out their website. I will link the specific page below. They do small production, which unfortunately means that their products tend to sell out very quickly, but it does mean that they're able to manufacture without creating a lot of waste. And finally, they are very size inclusive. They have sizes ranging from extra extra small all the way up to their recently added 6XL. So of fashion companies, I would say that this one's a pretty good one to support. The two dresses that I have are the Venus Ritz and the Lickety Split Ritz dress. The Venus Ritz retails at $399 on their website. I believe both of these dresses are currently sold out out, and the Lickety Split Ritz dress retails at $330. The Venus Ritz is made of a printed polyester organza and I believe that Selkie has all of their fabrics custom printed just because I searched a lot for some printed poly organza and it was pretty impossible to find. They also on their website say that they source all of their fabrics from Guangzhou. The lining for the Venus Ritz is a rayon. The Lickety Split Ritz is 100% cotton and the lining is the same fabric as the outer part of the dress. From looking at reviews and also now from personal experience, the cotton dresses tend to run larger than the organza dresses. So the cotton dress fits a little bit looser. I fit uh, pretty well exactly into a medium uh, organza Ritz dress, whereas with the cotton Ritz, it is a little bit loose on me. So I tend to wear that one more with stays or a corset to get that tighter fit. When the dresses are side by side, you can really see how the different fabric choices affect both the shape and the movement of the dresses. The cotton's a lot heavier, so it's drapier, whereas the organs is a lot lighter, so it's floatier and has a lot more movement. There is one detail missing that I think is pretty important in dresses of this size, not to mention this price range. Because both of these dresses, and really most of Selkie's dresses in general, rely solely on elastic to keep the sleeve shape, there should be hanging loops to keep the strain off of that elastic while hanging. However, there are none. If you've seen my video analyzing the strawberry dress, you might remember that there are hanging loops in that dress, which is a simple detail that really helps the longevity of the dress. Hanging loops move all of the strain of hanging to the waist of the dress. There are multiple layers of fabric and multiple seams coming together to add to the strength of this area other than letting it all hang from the sleeves and the elastic of the sleeves if you own these types of dresses you should absolutely not hang it from the elastic especially with a gown as heavy as the Ritz you can see that this is really stretching out the elastic quite a bit and if I were to leave it hanging like this the elastic would just deteriorate really quickly I use this wood hanger to hang both of my selkie dresses and I just pass them through and hang it from the waist on a rod it's not really the best solution because it does let it get wrinkled by having these folds in here, but it's definitely a, a better way to preserve the elastic than letting it just hang. So though these dresses are both labeled as the same style, they're both Ritz gowns, they are actually fairly different in their construction and somewhat in their pattern. The basic construction and pattern are the same, so I'll go through this whole thing with them together and then just point out the differences as they arise. 
One difference that I'll point out right away is the seam finishing. The cotton Ritz has mostly surged or overlocked seams, while the Organza has mostly French seams. Using overlock seams cuts down quite a bit on overall cost of production since it's a single step rather than the extra round of pressing and stitching necessary for French seams. It's not a visible seam finish on the cotton, but definitely would have been on the translucent organza fabric. I'm gonna start with the skirt since that's usually the part with the simplest construction on most dresses generally. The main difference in these skirts is the number of layers. The cotton Ritz gown has only one layer of fabric, while the organza gown has three. The cotton is quite a bit heavier than the organza, so this was probably a decision made to prevent the gown from being too heavy. The Venus Ritz, on the other hand, and it has the three layers and it has two layers of organza and one layer of rayon lining. It's kind of hard to see because these dresses are just so big but we've got one layer of the rayon lining and then two layers of the cotton or the poly organza. The lining in the organza ritz is only about knee length while the other two layers are floor length. Every layer in both gowns are full circle skirts gathered at the waist. Each of these circles is made of two half circles, one seam at each side seam in every skirt layer, so that's how I know it's two, cir or two half circles. The inner organza layer on the Venus gown has no ruffle, it's just a really long circle, while the outer layer on each gown is a shorter circle skirt with a rectangular ruffle attached to the hem. This shorter circle skirt is overlocked on both gowns, while the ruffle, both inner skirts, and the lining are finished with a quarter inch rolled hem. Obviously, since there's only one layer in the cotton gown, there aren't any layers to attach together, but it seems that in the Venus Ritz gown, the three layers are attached only at the waist. So all three layers were French seamed into circles and hemmed separately. Then it looks like the two organza layers were basted together at the waist while the rayon layer was left separate. That completes the skirt so we can move on to the bodice. The main differences in the two dress bodices are the linings and the direction of seam in the cups. The lining for the organza is an opaque rayon while the lining in the cotton is the same fabric used for the rest of the dress. Using the same fabric as the rest of the dress for the cotton probably just saves on labor costs since it's faster to just continue cutting the same fabric rather than pulling out another and since it's opaque it doesn't really matter. The organza fabric, however, is quite transparent and needs an opaque lining to prevent anything from showing through. There is also a second layer of organza in the bodice. I can kind of just feel that it's slippery underneath rather than feeling straight to the layer of rayon. I believe that the two organza layers were flat lined together and stitched as one layer, and they both seem to be caught on the same green line. You can see that one of the Venus figures is a little bit more obscured than you can see on the top layer of fabric, and that's because she's underneath the top layer of fabric. So she's on the second layer of fabric, but because of the way her body is facing, it looks like it's cut on the same grain as everything else is. So because they are cut on the same grain line, I'm just gonna refer to this combined layer as a fashion layer from now on, since they're flat lined together. The cups in the cotton dress have vertical seams, while the cups in the organza dress have horizontal seams. I'm not really sure why they chose this difference in pattern, but I personally prefer how the vertical cups tend to look on my own body, so the horizontal cups end up looking a little bit uh, pointy in the boob area, whereas the vertical cups are very smooth. So compared to the strawberry dress, the construction of the silky Ritz gowns are very simple. The first step is the same in both the cotton and the organza gowns. The outer shell and inner lining are assembled separately to make two layers of bodice. So I can't really show you that this is what happens, but it is. So this lining and this outer organza and the cotton lining and cotton outer are both assembled separately. The organza gown goes a step further in the separate layer constructions and the front seams are all top stitched. The cup and the underbust seams are top stitched a quarter inch away from the seam, while the horizontal cup seam is edge stitched. So the difference between top stitching and edge stitching, edge stitching is a type of top stitching, but it occurs really close to that seam edge, whereas top stitching can be anything that's on top of a seam. I assume this is done because the organza doesn't seem to like to hold a crease. You can see in some of the skirt seams where it's not laying as flat as would be ideal. However, top stitching will keep it flat and in place forever. This step is not necessary in the cotton since it presses very flat. The underwire was inserted next in both dresses. You can't obviously see the underwire, but hopefully you can kind of tell that it's in there and flexing. <laughs> 
Both rely on the cup to bodice seam allowances as the underwire casing. However, in the cotton gown, the seam allowance is pressed down and away from the cup, whereas in the organza gown, the seam allowance is pressed up into the cup. The seam allowance in the cotton gown was likely stitched a quarter inch away from the seam, catching both the bodice and cup seam allowance without catching anything that would be visible, and then the underwire was just placed in the gap. This means that the underwire for the cotton gown sits just outside of that cup seam. The underwire for the organza gown was placed in the channel made by the top stitching in the cup. This underwire sits just inside of the cup. The sleeves are put together pretty much the same way on both dresses, so I'm just going to show the cotton one since it's a little easier to see without all of the distracting print. The sleeves are also fairly simple. On each gown, the sleeves are just one layer of fabric with separate ruffles attached to the hem and the shoulder edge. Unlike the green dress from the last video where I just added an inch to the end of the seam allowance to allow for that ruffle, these ruffles are a separate strip of fabric. The ruffles were attached before stitching the sleeve into a tube. You can tell because the seam catches the elastic and everything in there. Ruffles look like they're stitched by a flat filled seam. So first they're stitched wrong sides together. The seam allowance of the sleeve is trimmed down to one quarter inch while the ruffle seam allowance is left long. The ruffle seam allowance is then folded under an edge stitch to create an elastic casing. This is done on the Venus Ritz as well. However, on the shoulder side of the cotton Ritz, that seam allowance that got turned under was just surged instead and then top stitched. I assume it's because they didn't think this would ever flip out because it's against the body. So it was just a little shortcut. Show what that looks like on here as well. So you can see that folded under edge here and then it gets edge stitched. The elastic's then inserted into the channel that was made and the sleeve is stitched into a tube. The cotton Ritz is just a normal seam that is overlocked, whereas the Venus Ritz is a French seam. When the sleeves are complete, they can be stitched in the bodice at the same time that the lining and the outer fabrics are joined together. The sleeve is placed on the outer bodice, so right sides together, and basted into place. Match up the side seam with the sleeve seam, and because there's no gathering, it's pretty easy to place. Then sandwich the sleeve between the outer and lining fabric, so this would all be flipped around, uh, and the entire top edge of the bodice is stitched together. So this whole thing gets stitched all at one time with this sandwiched in all right sides together. So on the organza dress, the entire front edge is understitched, meaning that all of the layers of the seam allowance are stitched to the lining layer to prevent the lining from rolling out and being visible. This little line of stitching along that edge is understitching, and what that does is it secures all of the seam allowances to this lining so that it never wants to roll out like this while you're wearing it. On the cotton rits, the bodice edge under the sleeves is left not understitched, so the understitching only goes on the very front and the very back. About an inch and a half is left without understitching so that the zipper can be placed. The outer and lining are tacked together by their seam allowances under the bust at the junction of the underbust and the cup seams. That finishes the bodice and we can add the skirt now. Oh, a quick mention, at some point before the lining and outer fabric get joined, a silky tag was added to each dress. From here, the dresses are completely different, so I'm going to explain them separately. For the cotton gown, the joining of the bodice and the skirt is very straightforward. The skirt is gathered at the waist and then stitched to the bodice right sides together. Very simple. <laughs> First it gets stitched to the outer side of the bodice, and then if you saw my last video where I made the green dress that I'm currently wearing, I explained a little bit how you can make it so that all of your seams are encased without any top stitching by turning your dress kind of into a sausage, and I think that's what they did here. So you can see here, this is machine stitched, but there's no top stitching here. So at some point, both of these for bodice layers were encasing or like sandwiching the skirt layer right sides together. That did that when this already done. They definitely did this part first because it's more complicated. So the circle skirt kind of had to be shoved all up into this bodice area so that you can encapsulate your seams around it, if that makes sense. So for example, I've got these two pieces of muslin and I'm gonna sandwich this green piece of fabric in between them. So then when it gets all pressed out, it's these two pieces like this, right? When you want to then put something on the other side of this with the two layers, then you have to re-sandwich something in there. But that's kind of hard, right? Because like you have to, usually you would just fold these under there and top stitch it. If you don't want any top stitching visible, then you have to tuck everything into here. So then you would have to sandwich it between these two layers at this end. So you have to kind of roll everything into here 
and then stitch it with all this junk in here. And then you unravel everything. Then you've got this middle strip encasing both of these two seams, but you did it without any top stitching like visible. So I think that's what they did with the waist of the cotton silky dress. Because this is how I think they did the waist, I think they did the big hem ruffle at the very end because getting the skirt plus the ruffle all into this space here would have been a huge pain. So I think it would have been easier to do the skirt onto the waistband first and then do the ruffle onto the skirt. The last couple of inches of lining between here and here, you can see are hand stitched. So those were left loose to let them install the zipper. The zipper is stitched into the dress like a standard invisible zipper and is only attached to the outer fashion fabric on the skirt and is sandwiched between the lining and the outer fabric at the bodice. This is where leaving that extra bit of loose lining is super important because that's what lets you get to the zipper backwards. So to stitch this, they had to flip all of this around like that. Uh, and the leaving the holes here lets you do that. The rest of the lining is hand stitched shut and a small binding was added to the end of the zipper. And then I guess this is where the ruffle gets added and at any rate, the cotton dress is done. Organza gown is a little bit more complicated since it has multiple layers, but at this point the waist edge of the bodice is still left free so the layers are separate. I think how they did this is that they stitched the organza skirt layers to the outer organza bodice layers and the rayon skirt layer to the bodice lining. So these two got stitched together and then these got stitched together. All of this was done with each of these pieces right sides together so that the seams sit in between the organza and the rayon. Each of these joinings was then overlocked separately with the rayon getting a stabilizer overlocked into it. So you can see where these are not put together all the way. You can see where they're so overlocked separately and then this white stuff here, uh, the like webbing stuff is stabilizer. And I think that's just because this rayon is a little bit flimsy so it would likely stretch out along a cut edge eventually. So. Once the organza and the organza skirt was stitched to the organza bodice and the rayon skirt was stitched to the rayon bodice, the two dress layers were put together, so right sides together and with like the skirt layers on the very outside, and they were just stitched together at the waist seam. We left about an inch and a half free at the center back to place the zipper. So that's where this opening is going to, is it's going up into the bodice. You can see my finger is now inside of the bodice there. Um, and that was kind of how I figured out that they had stitched these separately. So at this point where it's still right next to the zipper, the two separate, like the lining and the outer layer are completely free of each other. They aren't connected at the waist. The zipper was sandwiched between the outer layer and the lining and installed like a standard invisible zipper. So, pretty straightforward. And with the zipper, the Venus Fritz is completed. So I guess that while these two dresses are very similar in how they look, and they are supposed to be the same style, <laughs> they're actually quite different in their construction. I'm gonna be taking a pattern from one of them in the next video, so stay tuned for that. But I'll also do some quick checks to see if they differ a lot in just their pattern. So they do differ in their construction because of the fabric type specifically, it seems like, but I'm not sure how much of the actual pattern and like the sizing is different. Obviously the sizing is a little bit different because they do fit me differently, but we can check to see the pattern differences in the next one. Oh, you wanna help me? Hello. So the construction started out similarly, at least in the bodice, uh, but went in a really different direction once the skirt got involved. <laughs> it went in a very different direction with the skirt and the finishing due to the different number of layers and just the differences in the fabric type. It's super interesting how the fabric type really dictated a lot of the construction choices that they made. So with the cotton ritz, it's Hello, an opaque fabric. So you can get a lot, you can get away with a lot more shortcuts. It's a little bit more forgiving and that is probably not gonna fray out as much as the organza would. Whereas the Venus Fritz need a lot more specialized finishing and extra layers to keep it from becoming too transparent. These differences are probably what accounts for that big hike in price between the two. So is it worth it? Personally, I bought both of these dresses on sale. I paid about a little bit under 300 for each of them. And I'm not sure that I would 
personally pay full price for these. Not to say that, that it's not worth it, but for me, with the use that I get out of it, it might not be worth it for my own use. However, there's a ton of fabric that goes into this for my own recreation, which is going to be coming in the next couple of videos. I purchased 16 yards of fabric. That cost me about $130. I had a mentor early on in learning to sew and like learning how to price commissions who said that when you are pricing commissions, you should take about three to four times your price of materials. So that would end up being like $450 to $600 for these dresses. There is some other stuff to account for, such as they're probably getting their fabric for cheaper since they are able to buy it in bulk, whereas I bought it at a consumer price, and they are able to scale up a little bit. Making clothing is not really super scale in terms of production because everything that has a stitch in it had to be done by a person. Like there is no machine that can do stitching or fabric making or any of this stuff without the hands of a person being involved. A machine just does not have the brain power or like the hand-eye coordination, I guess, to put a dress together. So a human has to do it. There's only so much that you can scale up because of this. However, it's not that it's unscalable at all. So when I started making masks at like the beginning of lockdown and everything, it took me probably about 30 minutes to make one mask and I was just learning it. I was making one at a time. By the time that I started getting a little bit more familiar, I like had the motion feeling in my hands and could do it pretty mindlessly and I was taking large orders so I was doing a whole bunch at once I probably got my per mask time down to about six minutes that's a big scale up but I don't think I could ever get faster than that so with all that in mind they probably are able to produce them at a slightly lower cost than I'm estimating just because I am one person doing something I'm not like assembly lining it and you know I don't have the same kind of muscle memory to make these dresses over and over kind of mindlessly. That said, making stuff like that kind of sucks. Like doing assembly line dressmaking, I've done it for a couple of shows and it's probably the least pleasant way to make clothing. It's a lot more fun to make a piece of clothing from start to end yourself rather than having to just like do the same thing over and over again and pass it on to the next person. On the other hand, if we look at it on an hourly breakdown, I said in the strawberry dress video that a maker should be making minimum $20 an hour, absolute minimum. So if you take a $400 dress and you are being paid $20 an hour to do it, that gives you about 20 hours to do start to finish, like cutting, stitching, any other things you might need to do to run your business, right? For my personal recreation of this dress, I've budgeted about two to three hours for the bodice, an hour for each sleeve, and probably about three hours for the skirt seams since they're all French seams. If you are doing the cotton one, it's probably gonna be a little bit less time because you can serge everything rather than French seaming it. Gathering that big ruffle itself will probably take about two hours and each hem is narrow hemmed. So about one hour for each narrow hem, maybe two for the inner layer of organza because they narrow hemmed a circle. <laughs> and if you've ever narrow hemmed bias, you know that it's a huge pain. <laughs> maybe another hour for the zipper, which really should not take that long, but you know, it's zippers. So uh, give a little bit of extra leeway time. And that's 12 to 14 hours just for the construction. That's not to mention the cutting, which will probably take a few hours itself since it is a slippery fabric it's gonna slip and slide all over the table it needs to be thinned really thoroughly so that's a pain and then pattern development anything else you need to run the company that's easily 20 hours each thing that I've listed may take more or less time and we'll find out when I'm actually making my recreation of this dress but this is easily 20 hours that could go into this dress so from the standpoint of compensating the maker it's definitely worth the price tag if you believe in ethical compensation for your laborers then this is not an unreasonable price to expect from this kind of dress. At the end of the day though, I think it comes down to what people are willing to pay for these. Selkie has had no problem selling out their lines. Like Selkie does really good business and they've been raising their prices and people really don't seem to have a problem paying them. I've seen some people like gripe and complain about it, but they still buy them. <laughs> so if people are still buying it then yeah it's definitely worth it with the raised prices i really hope that they are passing on that compensation to their stitchers with all of this considered i think that paying about 400 dollars for this kind of dress more if it's a bigger dress or whatever it is a fair compensation for that labor so yes personally i do think it's worth it unlike the strawberry dress where it's very obvious all of the different techniques and skill that go into this these are a little bit more straightforward however they still do take a lot of time to make it's a little bit less obvious where all that cost comes from 
And I think that the selkie dresses require a little bit more examination to really understand that. But hopefully that my dress analysis can help you make a more informed decision on whether you think it's worth it. And yeah, that is the end of my really long pay your dressmakers appropriate wages spiel. That's what this whole series is. It's just pay your dressmakers more money propaganda. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the first in a series of three that I'm going to be doing regarding the selkie dresses and hopefully that is an interesting topic for you guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, if I skipped past stuff a little bit too quickly, if you have anything else that you need uh, explained a little bit more clearly, it it's kind of hard to explain these things without a really good visual aid and I'm not the best at the visual aids. <laughs> Um, however, uh, if you would like to see the rest of this series and you want to see what else I'm working on, then please subscribe. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye. Baby Pat, you want to say bye? Oh, look at that good girl. Your eyes kind of match my dress. Can you say bye-bye? No? Okay, well, bye guys. See you in the next one.